Hi, thank you for visiting me today. I came up with this idea for a new format for my YouTube channel. I called it Fragustation. I will be trying new random fragrances and sharing my thoughts, my experiences with them and at the same time having a little chat about what's new, what concerns me and so on. I hope this, uh, this format will be fun to do for me and fun to watch for you. As a perfume lover, I like trying new fragrances and uh, I prefer sampling them first. And sometimes I have those totally random fragrances that I cannot really unite with any particular idea. And so today we will be discussing very different types of scents. Recently I got a new uh, perspective on fragrances in general. I was visiting some webinars uh, organized by the practicing perfumer who lives in Nice. It was very interesting. The concept of webinars was uh, such that um, participants were all online smelling different raw materials, uh, spices and citruses, and we were learning to describe them in a bit more professional way. The goal of the webinar was uh, to learn deeply those notes, those raw materials and anchor them in our minds. So potentially we will be able to identify them in a fragrance composition. Where is mandarin? Where is orange? Where is lemon? Plus we were practicing to describe scents uh, in a more detailed way using uh, specific um, associations. According to that perfumer, professionals use uh, following descriptors to talk about um, different aspects of the scent. Color, does it smell pink? Does it smell gray? Texture, is it smooth? Is it fuzzy, fluffy? Music, is it loud? Is it uh, slow? That's the hardest for me. Like I don't associate scents with music at all. Fabric, is it silky? Is it velvety? Is it leathery? Taste and aftertaste, is it sweet? Is it uh, bitter, salty, plus the look, feminine, masculine, age, image, and also associations, childhood memories, events in life, and so on. And so today I will try to talk about the scents in that way. The fragrances I'm going to try, I ordered on one, I think it's German website, uh, that offers some decans. Normally I buy samples from official brand websites, but not all the brands offer discovery sets or single samples, so I decided to give it a try. So I have a few fragrances from Ella K, from Penhaligons, Frederick Mal, Frappan, Arte Profumi, so let's begin. First fragrance I'm gonna be trying is from Ella K, it's called Camellia K. I really love this one. I've been using it on my trip to Portugal and now it, it is fully associated with this beautiful summer trip that I had. Camellia is a flower that doesn't have smell, so the note of Camellia is somewhat imaginary. It's a fruity floral composition accompanied with orange blossom, tuberose, jasmine. It's like a bouquet of flowers. Fruity notes mentioned here are dragon fruit, mandarin and ginger and all that gives some sort of sweet and sour taste. It's very realistically fresh and juicy. I can say it's a humid scent uh, that evokes a smooth texture and um, fresh pink color in my mind. It has some body, it has some density. I cannot call it lightweight fragrance. It really hugs and holds you. It leans more feminine, but it can be used by anyone. It leaves an impression of youth, very youthful scent. It's smooth, it's moist, it's like a splash of fruit juice. It's a long-lasting fragrance. In a try-down it smells like white flowers and patchouli for me. It's really beautiful scent, it's very voluptuous and if you wear it at night, and it's actually very good for the evening occasions, so if you wear it at night you will wake up in a cloud of beautiful florals. Mm, it's so nice. I actually read about a neurological condition 
that only a few uh, percents of population can experience. Synesthesia, when stimulation in one sensor evokes the stimulation in a secondary sensor. For example, when people hear music, they imagine colors. Or when people smell, they imagine certain colors. For example, the smell of gasoline looks like a brown frog. <laughs> I'm not a synesthet, I don't experience the real synesthesia, but I can associate certain colors with certain smells, and so can you. Let's continue with Ella Kay and uh, talk about Poem de Sagano. Mm, I was really thrilled about the concept of this fragrance and I wanted to love it, but it didn't really happen. The scent profile is mentioned to be citrusy with notes of yuzu, grapefruit, bergamot and aromatic with notes of bamboo, eucalyptus and mint. Sounds very interesting. But my problem is that for me it smells soapy. It kind of smells like a shower gel and all the citruses that I experience they're like floating in a soapy water. That's why I don't enjoy it that much. I really have problems with soapy scents. Description. It is cold, it is light, and it resembles sort of fleecy, uneven texture for me. Uneven is maybe the good uh, word to describe it. It's unisex, it's suitable for spring, summer, and actually maybe in a dry climate it can smell different and it can reveal its aromatic aspects much better. Because currently we have a very warm and humid day in Finland. It's actually very sunny. I'm hoping to go for a walk after I finish the video. Personally, I don't have much personal associations or memories evoked by this scent. I guess it's just not for me. I don't feel comfortable in it. But I was really thrilled about the note of bamboo. Oh, and as for the color, something like a pastel... Um, pastel mint color. Currently I'm rethinking my channel overall, how I want to continue, what I want to do, and um, my channel is small and it doesn't have obvious topic. I just post what comes from my heart and sometimes it's a perfume video, sometimes it's something about life in Finland. So for, for a moment I feel like I want to continue those two segments on my channel because it comes naturally. But when it comes to perfume videos, something changed in a better way for me. I became interested in the functionality of fragrances and I want to somehow reflect it in my videos as well. Actually, those workshops uh, helped me to shift a bit my attitude uh, towards fragrances. Perfumer was talking about how, for example, woody scents can structure you, can help you concentrate on work how citruses can be really energizing and peppery notes can be very stimulative. Previously I would choose perfumes using only one criteria. Do I like it or do I not? And I would choose perfumes um, that would match my current mood. Am I happy? Am I active? Or am I melancholic today? And I noticed that I ended up with uh, a lot of gourmands, a lot of vanillas, which I really love but I think I might need some different profiles. I'm really missing some woody scents and citrusy scents. So how, how about the scents for active lifestyle? After the gym, for example, I don't have anything really suitable. How about going grocery shopping? And how about some office scents that can help me to concentrate? You know, vanillas and uh, soft uh, cocooning gourmands, they don't really work that way. There are more and more researches about how uh, certain smells can affect our mood and our productivity. That's what I'm interested in for a moment. I'm really fond of the concept of perfume wardrobe, like actual wardrobe. We don't wear the same fragrances to the gym and on a date. The fragrance should be appropriate. And I realize that I have some gaps in my collection. So those ideas I'm interested to develop in my future perfume videos. Let's move on to the next fragrance. It is called Tonka Fever from uh, Perfumery Particulaire. I will apply it on my skin because I really like it. 
Not many people talk about this niche brand and so far I'm only familiar with this fragrance. I really love Tonka beans and fragrances but I can never find a suitable one because all the Tonka bean scents they feel somehow bitter for me but this one doesn't. This one is a really soft vanillic very smooth Tonka bean and it's really nice in a dry down. It is slightly moist, a touch powdery unisex fragrance with some sweet and uh, smoky undertones. It evokes uh, a soft brown color for me. I think it can be nice with woolen clothes, with um, maybe camel color coat, some winter clothes, total beige outfit maybe. Beside vanilla and tonka, I also get some peppery notes and patchouli notes. That's actually a good candidate for my collection. It, it's really lovely tonka. The most pleasant I've found so far. Okay. So let's try another one. Legacy of Petra from Penhaligons. I will also spray it on my skin. Mm -hmm. That's a really nice discovery. The note of licorice is especially precious in here. It's really, it's not too sweet. It's a bit woody, a bit resinous, thanks to notes of uh, myrrh, olibanum, and benzoin. It has some, uh, it has some aromatic facets of rosemary and some freshness from citruses from bergamot. It's very beautiful, voluminous scent. Um, it's quite moist, but full of warmth, with a touch of freshness. It is woody and resinous for me, first of all, but not masculine at all. When I smell it, I imagine this vicious, those sticky, resinous textures um, with the shiny, ambery colors. There is a surprising note of fennel, but I guess it's mostly a marketing note because licorice and fennel in reality they smell somehow similar so I think it's mostly licorice but a very good one. Overall it's a really nice scent. I think it's one of the latest from Pinhaligans and it is really worth attention. Currently I'm so eager to become more knowledgeable about perfumery and make my videos more informative so I started to read books I actually found my uh, library card and I borrowed some books from the library. Currently I'm, I'm reading Perfume Bible. It is quite an easy read, but still there is a lot of useful information. Then I found in the library this collectible miniature perfume bottles. This one I bought last year. The, um, the essence, uh, discovering the world of scent, perfume and fragrances. This one is so beautifully illustrated and there is a lot of interesting information about the history of perfumery and also some interesting facts and uh, some researches, some interviews. But the most interesting discovery are those NE uh, magazines. I received them a few days ago, so hopefully I will find enough time to read all that. The same publisher, Ne, also offers the books about one particular ingredient and those ones are so interesting to read. Currently I'm in a situation that uh, I'm working four days instead of five and it wasn't my choice, but I think uh, maybe I can use this time to develop my channel to make my videos more interesting. So the next fragrance will be... Hmm, Frederick Mal, Mal, I guess it's Mal. Frederick Mal, Frederick Mal, Portrait of the Lady. I wanted to try this fragrance properly, and now I have a sample, and I can say I'm impressed. I love this rose and patchouli. It is velvety scent, very earthy and cold, and I associate it with crimson color. That, that can be so nice with a red lipstick, a velvet black dress uh, in the evening in a theater. I think this is how November smells for me. Heavy, dark, a little bit dirty even. 
Beside the note of rose and patchouli, I can clearly smell raspberry. There's, there's also some cinnamon that gives some uh, powdery, dusty feel. There is a note of incense and ambery notes, but for me they are somehow silent in this fragrance. Maybe because the other players are so prominent. I absolutely love the idea of rose patchouli fragrance. There is something so elegant and decadent at the same time. But is it my favorite scent with this combination? I think I prefer Eau Capital from Diptyque. It's also rose patchouli, but a bit more rosy. I think Eau Capital sits on me better. This one is still a little bit dirty. But the portrait of the lady is definitely a great scent and it deserves all the love it gets. Mm -hmm. Next, let's try Frappin 1270. I'm trying to spray about the floor and not above the sofa because the floor is much easier to clean. And I have a cat. I don't want to disturb her with the sand. I was hoping to really love this fragrance, but I'm not sure. Actually, now when I smell it again, I kind of like it. Frappin was originally a cognac house established in France in 1270 and it actually still functions as an alcohol producer. It's a family business. But this scent that uh, plays the tribute to the origins uh, of this business, it was um, created in 2010. So it's a boozy, boozy, boozy fragrance. There is a huge list of notes disclosed by the brand, um, but I think uh, it would be more relevant if I just focus on my own perception of the scent. I find this scent uh, heady, wet, somehow rough. Uh, it feels almost like the texture of suede for me. It's a cold fragrance. Uh, it has some chill, uh, some freshness. Um, it resembles an alcohol beverage, but the chilled one. The notes I get here are mostly prunes and, in general, dry fruits. For me, it's a fruity fragrance with chocolatey and woody nuances. I actually quite like smelling it, but I'm not sure how and where can I wear such fragrance. I don't have occasions for that fragrance. For me, it's an art object. It feels like the stroke of uh, purple oil paint when I think about the color. It's a beautiful scent, even memorable, I can say. It really stays in your mind, but I think it's just not for me. But very beautiful. I feel like reviewing fragrances from samples is not very welcomed on YouTube. Um, I noticed that viewers prefer to see full-size bottles, but I'm somehow scared of how many hundreds and thousands perfume bottles some enthusiasts collect. Because perfumes, they do expire. The life of perfume is free five years only. Of course, after that, we can continue using them, but the producer doesn't guarantee us um, that it is safe, that the composition stays the same, that it smells the same. So it's our own risk. Perfumes that expire, they can cause allergy when they are applied on the skin. So it makes me think how I would like to continue my perfume collection. And currently I feel like the best option is to collect smaller bottles. Personally, I aim for and I appreciate those beautiful miniature bottles. Not, not those kind of pen type um, sprays, but a beautiful 15 ml miniature, that's the best. This way I feel more confident that I can finish those perfumes within three to five years. But if people are selling decants, uh, that's a different thing, but it's not really what I want to do with my collection. We have a few more fragrances. Arte Profumi Bohemian. When we first uh, tried this fragrance in a boutique in Rome, my husband Eli really loved this one. And uh, 
I ordered him this sample, but eventually none of us really enjoys this fragrance. After trying it properly, we grew cold to it. Mm. It starts with delicious absinthe note, very green, very sweet, minty, somehow intoxicating, but very soon it fades um, and it stays very herbaceous and uh, somewhat dusty, which is okay. Uh, but my main problem is the bitterness. This bitterness uh, overcasts the sweetness and freshness that we have in the beginning. Eli uh, really loved the mintiness of this fragrance, but it disappears so fast and somehow it's slightly suffocating for me. I can describe it as a herbaceous scent. It is cold and dusty with some lemony nuances and some earthy and woody notes. In particular, I think vetiver. It has some rough texture and uh, I see it in somewhat greenish, grayish um, color. It's unisex fragrance, but it needs its human. I feel like I'm not the right human for this creation. Maybe in a hot climate it can smell better. But I have to say it smells natural. Although I don't really enjoy it, I can say that the quality is really good. Like all Arte Parfumi fragrances, they have very good quality. And then the last fragrance I have is also from Arte Profumi. This one is called the uh, Harem Soiree. I'm not gonna spray it because it's very powerful, at least for my taste. Let's consider it as a bonus fragrance. I wanted to try this one again because in my mind it stayed as a beautiful ambergris fragrance. And it has notes of ambergris and rose. But for me, it smells very metallic and animalic. Again, again, maybe it's just not my type of scent because it's very powerful. It's very sensual. Mm. I think I just really don't enjoy this fragrance. Although it has some somewhat velvety texture and uh, I can see it in, a, in the red, orange red color, but very dark one, almost black. Because it's an ambergris dominant fragrance, it has the saltiness, some metallic aspects. It's somehow boozy also. Smelling it just for a few uh, seconds, I'm already tired of this fragrance. It's absolutely not my thing. Okay. That's the end of Fragustation. It was actually very fun to do for me and I hope you also enjoyed it. So to sum up my chat a little bit, I can say that uh, I'm hoping that this autumn I will have more time to develop my YouTube channel, to grow it. And uh, I would like to continue making what comes from my heart. Sometimes it's a video from daily life, sometimes it's a perfume video. And I want to make my perfume videos more interesting, more knowledgeable. If you would like to leave me a comment, maybe you can tell me what is your current um, favorite fragrance and in which color do you see it with which texture it is associated and if you can tell me what music do you hear when you smell your favorite fragrance because for me it's a I'm not a musical person I don't have music in my head it's a funny fact about me but I almost never listen to the music I prefer to listen to a podcast or an interview or a lecture, something informative. So that was it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.